This is Yalak from the New Testament is Fake series, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon. It's July 23rd, 2020. My lesson today is titled, Paul is Still a False Prophet. I'll start with the book of Joel, chapter 2, in verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So just to jump in here a little bit, Joel chapter 2 is dealing with the restoration of the children of the Most High. And his goodness has returned unto them. They've got their salvation. And now he's saying he's going to pour out his spirit as well. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So, this is after things have changed. The Most High has returned to his people. And now they will even be prophesying. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And remember, Jeremiah 31 had said, No one will be teaching each other, Know the Lord, know the Lord, because they will all know the Lord. So they're going to have contact with the divine for themselves. Each person is going to connect with the Most High for themselves. So that way, nobody will be deceiving the next person by teaching them how to know the Lord. They're going to know the Lord for themselves. And so it's saying here, they're going to be prophesying themselves. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. That means from the young to the old, nobody's going to lose it. So you can't say the old will have it because they're seasoned. They've had many years, like a few decades to read all the books and study all the stuff and know the Lord and so on. But even the young who haven't had that many years of coming across many books and saving up money to buy whatever, even the young ones will still have a connection with the Most High and know the Lord for themselves. This is showing that prophecy continues in the, might I say, new world, or in the time of quote-unquote heaven, for the Christian-minded who think they're going to heaven. This is like the future time when you would think that you're going to heaven, but it's going to be here on earth. So it's kind of like in the time of heaven or in the time of goodness and when the Mosai returns to his people to establish them properly on the earth once again. But notice that it uses the word shall. Your daughters, sons and daughters shall prophesy, old men shall dream dreams and so on, and young men shall see visions. So it is using the word shall, which expresses the future tense. So it's saying this is something that's going to happen later on. Now, let's run over to the one who is still a false prophet, the Apostle Paul from the New Testament. From the new book, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'll read verse 8 to 11. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Now didn't the Most High just says in the future, in the time of heaven or restoration on earth, that prophecy will continue? Your sons and your daughters prophesy, young men, old men, and so on will see visions. But Paul here, the one who has great expertise in false prophecy, skilled in false prophecy, he says, charity never faileth. So in his skill, he teaches you what will never fail. But the thing that the Most High says will actually never fail, but will go on, he tells you that one will fail. It will stop. Is Paul speaking from the Spirit of the Most High? Or is he speaking from the Spirit that God poured out on the day of Pentecost, which he later received but the New Testament teaches that it will lead you and guide you into all truth. But yet, he seems to be led into lies and is leading you into lies. That's because Paul is still a false prophet after all the explanations that the messianics and the false teachers give us and the misguided teachers. 
But he says, prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Let me run back and read Joel 2.28 for you again. And it shall come to pass afterward. After all these things, your trouble and so on, and you've been delivered from Egypt 2.0 and Babylon 2.0, that I will do something new that you have not seen in your lifetime. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he tells who the flesh is. It's not the heathen, but it is upon your sons, the flesh of your sons, and upon the flesh of your daughters, and they shall prophesy. Your old men, not the old men of the heathen, of the Gentiles, but your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men of the nation of Israel, or Israfica, or Isra Africa, that's coming in the Africa of God series, that Israel in the Bible pages is Africa. So when you think of Israel, El of the Canaanite Egyptians, then you should more think of it as Isra Africa or Israfica. And certainly Africa is going to be changing its name and they're looking already into having one common language because the scriptures are being fulfilled. So your young men shall see vision. So let's run back now and continue reading from 1 Corinthians. Because Paul says it shall all vanish away, including the prophecies that the Mosai says will happen when he pours out in the future his spirit upon all flesh. Verse 9 from 1 Corinthians 13. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. But the most I just said through his prophet Joel in Joel 2.28, that it's not something that is going away, but it is something that will come in the fullness of its abundance. So abundant it is that he has to specify that this flows over to different age groups, your young men and different genders, the male and the female, the sons and the daughters. The age groups, the young and the old, will see visions and they're prophesying, all of them. But Paul says this stuff is only in part and is going to be done away with anyway. Because Paul is skillful in deception and he tells you what he wants you to think. And he does not care about what the Most High says. He leads you down the steps of deception toward hell or you might prefer the lake of fire verse 10 but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away verse 11 when i was a child i spake as a child but he's still speaking like a child because a child looking at the scriptures would say wrong things because they don't understand it but in the future according to joel 228 even the young ones will have understanding but right now, the young will not understand. So Paul is reaching the young in faith and teaching them what he wants them to think and believe and understand, which is wrong stuff. So he really still is a child in his knowledge at the time when he's writing these things in the New Testament. Because he still remains with childish knowledge, still drinking the milk of the word and never growing up to the real word of the Most High. He's drinking the milk of the word of other deceivers. Because even the milk of the word of the Most High would still be strong in truth. So this milk of the word that Paul drank was not even the word of the Most High. Because God's word is true. Whether it's new to you or you're well seasoned in it. So when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, just like many others have done and just like I have done. When I was a child in Christianity, in my mind, I mean, when I was a child in Hebrew Israelitism, in my mind, I mean, because I found Hebrew Israelite stuff when I was an adult. But I was a child in my mind to spiritual things. So I thought as a child and I still thought Christian 
things, but in a Hebrew Israelite way. But when I became grown up in my mind and in my heart to seeking the Creator, I put away childish teachings and childish understandings of Hebrew Israelite Jesus worship. Even though they told me, don't call him Jesus, just call him some black Messiah. But I put away childish things. When will you put away childish teachings from the others who learned to follow Paul? So Paul is saying, contrary to what the Most High said, that prophecy will cease. Even the Most High says it's going to be everywhere because he's going to pour out his spirit. How do you know everywhere, all over the land, upon all his people? Because he said it will be upon all flesh. Even the one that's far in the remote areas of the land who don't want to live in houses, they just want to go and be in the bushes, living, sleeping under a tree or living in a cave because that's what they like. To be in nature in the forest area, sleeping on a hammock and sleeping among the trees. That's what they want to do. It will go all the way into the forest areas everywhere. It will be upon all flesh. Because like the Moses says, the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. But Paul does not believe this. He says all this stuff will cease. It will stop. And what Paul was doing was ensuring that it would stop by teaching you to not look forward to it. But the Most High did not make you be in charge of it. He says, I will be in charge of it. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. In that time, it's not because you put together some new crusade, a weekend crusade or a one week long convention to make it happen. You're not going to be in control of it happening, which means you could stop it by latching onto the wrong teaching that you didn't realize was wrong. And so you would work to stop it because you have a different understanding because you learned from people like Paul. But the Moses says, uh -uh, I'm too smart for this. I will be in control of it. I will choose when it happens. I will pour out my spirit at that time. And you will not be able to resist it because my doctrine shall drop as rain and it will come upon all flesh. When you're outside and the rain stops, starts falling, it will just fall upon you. You cannot prevent it. I will do it. So let's get some more from Romans now for Paul. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Paul says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, that means in the Torah scrolls or the Old Testament times, in Torah times, these things were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So if they were written for our learning to instruct us of how to live and of what to expect in the future, like in this case, the Moses says in the future, you're going to prophesy and so on. How is it that Paul learned that himself, that prophecy will continue in the future, but tells you from the so-called spirit that it will cease? Is Paul a false prophet? By extension, as descendants of Paul, is your teacher a false prophet who teaches you the words of Paul, that you should obey them? Because the Most High says, my word is as a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces, breaks the deception, the rock hard deception that won't move to pieces. He'll smash it. And that's what's happening here again on the Alok Lessons YouTube, Twitter, Patreon, New Testament is fake series. Let's run over to another one of Paul's writings, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just like Paul who said the old stuff was written in the Torah for our learning. So he learned all of that Torah stuff. Starting when he got hit on the Damascus Road, according to his story that he testified about. And so he started learning, learning, learning. But he was never himself able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You can tell that because the Torah exposes Paul when the Most High said to Joel, the prophecies will go on in the future when you are restored. But Paul said it will cease. Paul learned all of that. 
but did not come to the knowledge of the truth. Because a false prophet does not desire change or truth. Let's go on some more. Let's run back now to the Torah and hear it from the prophet Jeremiah. A major prophet they call him, so he's got some major stuff to speak, some strong stuff. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34. And they shall, now by the way, this is, he just taught in the first few verses, like 31, verse 31, 32, 33, and so on, and saying that you're basically restored and the law will be in your heart, inward parts, and you will write it there in your inner parts, and so on. So verse 34 picks up and says, that knowledge will not cease nor vanish away, which is not what Paul is teaching. But 34 says, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them. Which is precept locking in with Joel chapter 2, verse 28, which is so, saying that even the young will know and be able to prophesy and see visions. They will all know me, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. But Paul says, even after he read this himself in the Torah, that even though it says they will all know me, and, and that means knowledge will still be flourishing, he says whether there is knowledge it shall cease, whether there is prophecy, whether there is all the stuff, he says it will cease. But the prophet, the major prophet, who was major and well known before Paul was even born, Paul says, basically he's saying, this guy Jeremiah is a liar because it will all cease. So Paul is teaching people that major prophets are liars when he is the liar skilled in the knowledge of trickery and deception. In other words, how to use the knowledge from the tree of the knowledge of good mingled with evil to deceive. Paul learned from the serpent. Serpent doctrine is what Paul is teaching Israelites in New Testament times. Let's run over now to the book of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 4 the heart also of the rash you see that it says the rash here mahar from the hebrew to be hurried be anxious and that's it you're hastening you hear somebody telling you about hebrew israelite and worship jesus but call him yeshua and so on and and you're just in a hurry to be saved you're in a hurry to get out of 400 years of captivity you just lock on to it you're in a hurry so you don't look deeply into what they say and go study that and seek the most for yourself. You take what they say and start worshipping Christ again. Even though you were done with him from the Christian teachings. But he says here, the heart also of the rash shall understand what? The thing that Paul said would vanish away. Knowledge. He says you will understand knowledge, which means knowledge will not go away. It will still be there and now you will be able to understand it. How? For yourself. For they shall all know me, according to Jeremiah 31, 34. They shall all know the Lord. So the rash shall understand knowledge that Paul said will vanish away. And the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. How? They're going to speak plainly. They're going to prophesy. They're going to, they're going to know the word of the Lord and be able to speak it out. But Paul said, this stuff, the tongues will cease. Whether there's knowledge and tongues and so on, they, and prophecy, they shall cease. They shall disappear. They will vanish away. Because I am the great apostle Paul, the 13th apostle. And I know better than every other the Sabbatarian apostle that was before me who actually walked with Jesus for a few years. I know better than them all and more than the prophets from the Old Testament. And I'm telling you, they will cease. 
But the prophet here, Isaiah, says, you will understand, you will have the knowledge, and you will be able to speak plainly. Because you will get rid, the most I will get rid of the likes of Apostle Paul and his descendants who are still stopping you on the street today telling you that you are the children of Israel who need to turn back to the Most High and worship Christ. One chapter over, so Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Paul said it will vanish away. If you're walking with a cane, with a stick, because something is wrong with you, and, and you need to lean upon that crutches and so on for your stability. If that is taken away, do you have stability? No. You're standing talking to people, you're leaning up on a van or a car, and the person comes and drives off now. Can you lean on it anymore? No, because it's moved, it's gone away. But Paul says it will vanish away. But the most I say, no, you need this stuff for your stability. But Paul says it will vanish away. But the most I say, no, you need this stuff for your stability. To, in order to connect with me. But Paul takes away what, that which should be used as your stability. And he says it will vanish away. It will go away. It will cease. But the prophet here says, in agreeing with Jeremiah and in agreeing with Joel, so you can have precept upon precept and line upon line, which Paul re refuses to go by. He says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. He don't have no treasure in the heart of Paul. Because Paul teaches deception by ignoring the Torah precepts and line upon line of those who taught before him. So the knowledge that Paul said would disappear will be the stability of your times. Notice my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why we don't have stability in the earth right now. But when the Mosah brings it back, the knowledge of the Lord and of his ways and of his power and his miracles will bring stability to us again and we will flourish. It will be the stability of our times. But Paul says none of that because Paul was working for the enemy and did not want you to reach stability. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the what? The knowledge that Paul said would cease. The knowledge that Paul said would cease. He said it shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But Paul said it will vanish away. The knowledge and the prophecy and, the, and the, the tongues, it shall all cease and vanish away. But the Bible says that God said the earth will be full of it. And Paul says it will vanish away. He didn't say a little bit will, will vanish away. Some of it will vanish away, but we will still have most of it and still be able to find our way. He says all of it will vanish away. It will stop. It will cease. Look up the word cease in the dictionary. He says it will cease, but the Moses says it will be abundant. It will be full upon the earth. Just like when the waters of the flood of Noah covered the earth and the earth was full of water, the Moses says the earth will be full of his knowledge. You will have full stability. Anywhere you plant your foot on the earth, it will happen for you. This is your future. And Paul hated that because he knows he is a deceiver and an imposter and would not get a chance to see the glory of the Lord. So he didn't want you to have it either. So he says, I will teach them some wrong things. I will give them lies. So final verse from Isaiah again. Chapter 44, verse 25. Okay, I'll read 24 and 25. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. 
that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, like Paul is his teachings now is frustrate frustrated, and maketh diviners mad, the ones who are using tokens learned from Paul to lie to you and are divining lies before you and a wrong path to walk before you. The Most High says he frustrates all of that. That's why when they, when, when they hear you coming to them about these things, they don't want to talk to you anymore because it is frustrating for them to deal with you coming to them because you are figuring out the truth, because you are hearing the truth someplace other than where they teach, other than where they meet. And turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish. The Most High makes the knowledge of Apostle Paul nothing but foolishness. If you teach Paul, you utter error against the Lord. And Paul is still a false prophet. Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, New Testament is fake.